Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. It's Tuesday evening, just out of work and headed up to town for some shooting. It's just before sunset. It's beginning to get dark. Lights are coming on which changes the dynamic hugely. And I have to say, I've been really struggling the last month or so with a real dose of creative block. We all get it. Every creative person gets it. Sometimes it takes a bit of a shift to get rid of that creative block. And today I'm changing camera. I'm shooting with the Fuji again. It's been a long time since I've shot street with it. I've used it quite a bit out on walks for landscapes and dog and family and beaches and those sorts of things. But it's been a good couple of years really since I've brought it up into the city to shoot with vengeance. So I'm quite looking forward to that tonight. Sometimes I think going back and using older stuff or changing gear does help shift you a little bit. Yeah, I've got the 23 on here, which is about 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. So perfect lens for street photography. I think it was Dr. Johnson who said he was tired of London is tired of life. I'm not tired of London. I'm not tired of life. I am tired. And that's part of it too. I think when you're tired, it is much harder to uh, really see things creatively and it's a good opportunity to step back, step off that creative bus for a while and then hopefully get back on a bit later. And that's what I'm doing today. Here, but um, merry-go-round in full effect with carousel and he's in the puddle. Maybe something here. Might actually be better when the sun's gone down and it's darker but some nice twist people moving through obviously you don't want them to completely obscure what's going on on the merry-go-round and the carousel but um, some legs give it a good little bit of perspective shift a little bit of surrealism I'm liking the blur on getting down towards the edge of the frame here as well I love this fish and chip pan Might be fun when this actually gets moving. Quite enjoying the reflections in the side of the uh, candy, flats wag candy floss wagon here. Um, I always enjoy a, a sign or two, so I'm quite, quite liking that. Okay, so I've got a few shots here that I'm quite pleased with. Took it down to half a second, which um, the X-T5 seems to have handled pretty well. Uh, but I actually think I prefer it with this fast shutter speed. On the 500th, I'm actually catching some of the uh, people, some of the young girls who are leaning back in the ho on the horse and doing those things, which you lose with the fast shutter speed. So it just tells a little bit more of a story. How can you resist a carousel, eh? So we shot a few from low down and now I'm up high as you can see, so this is one of the bridges over the Thames. But if we're talking about unblocking creativity, then changing your perspective is also a good way of doing it. You saw me earlier getting down low with that puddle and the reflections of the merry-go-round. Well, here we are up high, and we're only about 20 yards from where we were a moment ago down in the puddle, but now we've come upstairs, <coughs> we're looking down. I love these lights that snake their way across, zigzag their way across. And you've got a pretty constant stream of people coming through, some nice structures, trains going through. I can't actually see an image here at the moment. You're probably all looking at this and going, there's one, there's one, there's one. But um, nothing quite jumps out at me just yet, but this is a good spot. I quite like the, uh, the idea of this sole person just down there on her own on her phone texting under the lights which is a little bit far away for me to reach with the 23. I've got a sneaky 56 in the bag but 
now is not the time to change that. There is definitely an image that works here. If I can get that lamp underneath the bridge, I don't know whether you could see, but if I can get the lamp under the bridge and her isolated just there like that, I also like the puddle. I want that at the front. It gives a bit of balance to the image. Um, but getting down low enough to get the lamp underneath the bridge and her on there on her own. But preferably without anybody behind her. Which is tricky. Everyone's going home and fair enough, it's getting cold. I just wish they'd go home a bit quicker. Getting dark quickly. The magic this place is, isn't it? Just magic. Again, a shift in perspective, and again, still up on the bridge, but overlooking the road this time, and quite enjoying these cyclists coming through. Um, suddenly everything stops, but if you can get them going in both directions on a slow shutter, could be something interesting. Obviously, their lights dragging through to make the image work. They're all coming towards me at the moment, but it is two-way. Trust me, there you go. What I really want is quite a few at a time. Actually got a really pleasing shot here. With those doors open on the train, the light above, people going through. There we go. I don't know whether you can see, but with the digital teleconverter on to 1.4 times on here, and it fills the frame really nicely. Of course, what I haven't got now is anybody walking into it, but uh, the doors are closing. You know, I'm ever the optimist. You have to be in street photography. And the right person will come along and they will walk into my frame. And I will get the image and it will win a gazillion prizes. It is worth a million in prizes. Come on, baby. Another unblocker is that actually being out and about and going slow and taking photos is mindful. It's a mindful practice. You see, I've taken, it's about an hour since my train came in and I've only come from just the other side of the London Eye, the other side of those tower blocks over there. So probably, I don't know, a quarter of a mile and it's taken me an hour to get here. Because all the while I've been distracted, I've been looking at things, I've been anticipating things, I've been watching and creating. Boy, does that feel good. We're all going on down below. Loving the long shadows, loving the golden glow from the lights, the blue of the street. What I really want here is one person on their own, completely isolated, or maybe a couple holding hands. I guess a kiss is too much to ask for. A kiss is always too much to ask for. But um, it's busy and we're not going to get individuals or even couples we might get couples, but there are going to be lots of other people around as well. I'll give it a moment or two and just see if anything else comes, but um, yeah, I love the old lamps, I love the golden glow, as I said. It's just getting the right people. So yeah, I was going to do a, a piece to camera about how going somewhere new helps to unblock your creativity. And yet here I am back in the same old places. But, um, you know, it is certainly true that going somewhere new does help unlock your creativity. But there's also a lot to be said for just getting out there, even if it's somewhere you always go. Sitting at home and thinking, no, oh, can't be bothered, I always go there. You're not gonna take any pictures if you stay at home. So, so get out, just get out and wander around and you will see things. You definitely will. You know, you will find whatever it was, that excitement that first got you out of there, that made you click, that helped you feel a buzz when you went out. Not just the buzz from crossing the road on the Red Man. 
Get out and live it and you will find that buzz that you first got from street photography, even if you haven't got it now. And another opportunity to look down, so a bit of a perspective here, perched between two railings, looking down into a cellar where this is a restaurant. Um, I do like the, the fallen leaves. Um, they haven't drifted by the window, they've got stuck on it. And there's a lovely red glow and some golden colours and I'm just waiting to see who walks into the scene, but there will be somebody. Good people in yellow hats. Soho, Chinatown, always buzzing. Yeah, so neon is always something of a draw and you can see that it just shines off everything. There is an image here in the bonnet of this car, but there's so much traffic coming through that actually getting the chance to properly frame it up and get someone coming through it is a little bit like taking my life into my hands. Um, I can't get far enough back with the 23 to quite get what I want. But I'm working on it. Sometimes a, a really good way of breaking that creative block is to come out with, with a mate or a buddy. It's good to see how other people see things and, um, you know, get motivated and inspired by looking at the world the way that they look at it. Even if it's the same world, they will see things differently to you. And so that's, that's always good. The, the downside of shooting with a mate is that you are not so efficient. You know, I've just stopped to fill myself up with some warm chicken, teriyaki, and you know, I was done and dusted really quickly, probably indigestion city, but, um, you know, I didn't even stop and look through my images. I just ate and, and went. And that's probably the better way to go if you're going to get loads of images. And when you're beginning to feel like you're on a bit of a roll, which I kind of think I am a little bit tonight, then... You know, you, what you want to be doing is, is being quick and eating. Um, having said that, it's always good to see a mate, isn't it? So just paused here by these three mannequins. It's beginning to rain a little bit. Um, this is a little bit of a cheap shot, desperate shot, but sometimes you need a desperate, cheap shot to get yourself started when you are stuck. Um, so finding something like this where you've got, well, not a car parking in front of it, that ain't great, but you know, where you've got a, a fairly easy, a bit of a gimme of an image. Um, you know, you can just wait for the right things to come along and you've got one or two in the bag, even if they might not be the best shots. It's just like warming up, really. So I'm gonna head down Regent Street, spotting the fancy car, Ferrari, and a bus. I'm going to head down Regent Street towards Piccadilly and the obvious beauty of shooting at night is that you've got all these little suns in the street lights, in the store windows, lighting everybody up. You haven't got to worry about 
cloud or low light or soft light. People are constantly lit and from all sorts of directions, above, to the sides, sometimes even below, so always worth a look. You just find beauty in the completely mundane. Having really struggled to feel creative over the last few weeks, it was certainly good to be back in London with the camera and I think shooting in the evening helped because night photography is always something I've enjoyed. Good feeling. So back to the list, it's not an exhaustive list by any shot and I'm sure you'll have a few suggestions of your own to add to it. If I could add two or three more, I think one would be, this is probably number 10 isn't it? Um, to try shooting with just one focal length, limit yourself. Perhaps you're used to going out with a 28 millimeter or a 35 millimeter, you know, very standard street photography lenses. Well, try something a bit longer. Try 85 millimeter, a classic portrait length, or, or even 135, or even get a whopping great zoom and see, see what you can get with that. You know, there, there are rules and there are rules. Those rules about you should shoot with a 35 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens or whatever it is. Otherwise, it's not proper street photography. Well, those rules are there to be broken. Go, go and be creative. That's what it's all about. So, so try another focal length. Another suggestion would be to get yourself involved with a community. I talked a little bit about shooting with a friend and that's great but if you've got a, a group of photographers who you can go to and share your work with either for real in the flesh or, or it could be a, a group that you meet online and may only ever meet online it's a really useful thing to do you can start to see the world the way that they see it they talk through their influences with you you discover photographers you may never have have heard about and, and see their work and their books and those sorts of things as well and you can set each other assignments so you know you might decide that you're all going to shoot um, couples for a month or you're going to have a theme of slow shutter photography or whatever it might be but those things help you to get your creativity going again and obviously you can always go back to the work of the street photography masters you know there's so much to see and enjoy online and social media but if you want consistent quality then then pick up some books or go to a gallery and and, and you know or, or if you can even handle handle some prints because you can't beat seeing the photograph for real as it's meant to be rather than backlit on a computer screen if there was one rule that I think rules them all, one rule to rule them all, I think it would be just get out and do it. Because as I keep saying, and I think it was Elliot Erwitt said, nothing happens when you stay at home. It really doesn't. And if you're feeling that you're creatively blocked, then sitting at home and wallowing about it and saying, oh, poor me, I feel so uninspired, that's going to get you nowhere and you'll get no photographs at all. So honestly, just get out, take your camera with you and start looking power your camera up, take the lens cap off, have it in your hand, and you're already in that photographic frame of mind, so you will, I believe, automatically start looking. So getting out is really important. Stay optimistic, because as a street photographer, you have to be, you know, it's, it's all about going out and seeing what you might find. You rarely know what it is you're going to, to go out and get. So being optimistic is something that I think we all do. But when you're going through those times of feeling completely creatively blocked, know that it will end, so remain optimistic. So, we're going to take a look at a few images that I shot on the day in a little greater depth. First up is this image here, which was shot in Soho on Shaftesbury Avenue, for those of you who know London. And this is obviously a, a bakery window. I loved the color green and or the, the that particular tone of green i liked the fancy colors on the cakes and the details in the cake and the woman behind the waitress serving um, reaching through to take something from the top shelf up here it re just really appeals to me um, i suppose if i'm being super fussy i would prefer to have got the focus on her face rather than on the cakes but actually Maybe that's better because it does draw attention to the cakes 
Um, I like the dynamic movement in her arm, the fact that she's reaching, uh, there's a gesture in there. Gestures are always good in street photography. And I kind of like how this vertical line here happens to sit on the third line. Um, her eyes are roughly on that intersection of the thirds as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a candid moment, it's a very real moment, and it's obviously a night moment. So I just, I just really liked it. The, the, something about the colour reminded me of William Eggleston's work, and if you don't know William Eggleston's colour work from the 60s, then you know maybe he's one of those street masters who you could go and check out. So that's the first image. Second up, I've processed this one in, in black and white. Um, there wasn't a great deal of colour in it anyway, it was mostly sort of pale shades of, of beige. But um, I always enjoy using frames, and here you've got the frames of the taxi as they were waiting in traffic on a, on a traffic light, and the theatre uh, declaring that Oedipus is opening tonight. Um, that in itself is quite a statement. But as I said, we've got frames. So in the, the main frame here, the, the subject is our taxi cab driver, and I've got his silhouette, more or less, here. Um, but he's also just meeting the silhouette of the other taxi driver in his window opposite. So it's almost like an, an Eskimo kiss, these two noses perfectly lined up height-wise. And I really like that. And then you've also got this other frame here that this woman is, is walking through. And you've got some smaller frames over there, but they're a little bit indistinct. So this is a, an image that I, I'm always drawn to, really. I, I really I like frames. I think they're really powerful. I like text in an image. Um, Oedipus opens tonight, makes me want to laugh. Um, but I think particularly I like just like the, the silhouette of the guy here and the, the matching silhouette of the driver opposite. That's the second one. An abstract image now. This was taken over the river and it's very, very minimalist. The, you know, you've got the black or is it dark blue of the Thames here and just the shimmering highlights of the lights in the ripples giving you the information that you need that this is shot over the river. So su superbly simplistic. Um, and I don't mean that to be big-headed, I, I, I just mean it's very simplistic and very striking, I think. I, I think it would work really well, blown up very large and framed. This is only A4 size. So that's three. Again, staying with the, the abstract idea. Do you remember the images I shot looking down over the bridge of the cyclists coming through? I like the way the, the lights the red lights and the white lights of their front and rear lights draw lines through the image, slightly curved, and they, I suppose, juxtapose or resonate against the white street markings um, in, a, in a very black setting. So it is a very abstract shot. I mean, literally, it is street photography, isn't it? It's a photograph of a street. And, you know, slow shutter speed, which I don't usually do, the X-T5 handled the image stabilisation really well. I can't remember what the shutter speed was, but probably something like an eighth of a second, something like that. And the lights um, of, the, of the cycles just going through. And one more, because I was feeling greedy. This was shot in Soho. I don't think it actually appeared in the video, but I was, I was working this scene because I was enjoying the reflections on the, the bonnet I think the Americans call it the hood of the car here, with the reflections of this building, uh, the windows in the curve of the bonnet, um, and then in the, the windscreen here. And just almost lost in the frame, you've got this small figure of the woman waiting. Um, there's a story, isn't there? What's she waiting for? Again, if you go back to my previous comments about frames. There are millions of frames in this photo. There are all these window frames here. There are the frames reflected in this windscreen frame and then looking through the car, you've got another frame here with a tiny person. It would be nice if they were a little bit taller and, and were a little bit more of a feature in, in that frame. But um, yeah, it's, it's very much about the frames and about this person. It's amazing how the human eye is always drawn to a figure, even when it's just a, a small part of the image.
I hope you've enjoyed watching me unblock my creativity. As I said, it's, it's not an exhaustive list. It's just things that occurred to me as I went out and about on the evening and a, and a few that came to me afterwards. But as I said, stay optimistic because you will break it and just get yourself out there and take those photos because that's the way to get back in the creative swing. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do give it a like, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, it would be great if you could do that. See you in the next one. Take care.